Hi, uh, welcome back to Auto Beta 2T. Uh, today we're here because I'm still trying to complete the challenge from Practical Sports Bikes back in 2012, get a Kawasaki AR50 to 100 mile an hour. So what we're going to do about it today, today I'm going to play with the ignition. I'm going to remap the ignition to see if we can get some more power out of it. I've done a lot of mods recently. There's also a big risk as well and as you all know the biggest risk two strokes it's season normally from detonation so if I advance the ignition too much try and get too much power I might end up with a piston looking like this which should be bad. Also coming up uh, you can see there a bit of flow testing I'm just getting used to using this so And also uh, check out Derek Harris's excellent video on two-stroke ignition timing. Um, it's in his channel. I'll leave a link. It's Horsepower Race Developments. Link in the description. It's worth looking at that because that'll explain a lot of what's happening with what I'm doing today. So go check him out. Thank you so much for all the new subs. Thank you for everyone who's watched the last video as well. It's doing really well and it really makes it worthwhile what I'm doing. Also, I really appreciate all the comments. Just keep them coming. If you're new, please subscribe. I was trying to get to two by the end of the year, but we smashed that. So let's go for five, try and get to 5,000 subs. Hey, I don't actually do any recording at Dino for this, so I'm recording the screen. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to cut it in with some B-roll of what I'm actually seeing on the screen. I'm going to see how that works, try and make it a little bit more interesting than recording me clicking through the screen. So to be a little bit of human. Now I'll get rid of that distraction. But if anyone's got the last article, I think they did one more test run, I don't appear to have it, please let me know. Also if anyone's got another Altisa uh, AR93 barrel, I'd be quite pleased to have that as well. So, I'm going to go through, so I'll meet you on the screen recording. So, I've got my little list of all my tests I did, I've been through it, I've been through the data. So I did a load of tests, before I started I did the test I did the night before, so 17.2, I came back the next day and did a rerun. And the rerun came up with pretty much exactly the same curve. So I'm quite happy that the dyno does pretty much repeatable. I then went in to my um, Ignitec, and you can see there, I've just got a very basic map. This is the advanced map too, so that's actually the BDK curve. That's what I had been using. So, for the first test, I just programmed in a 10 degree curve, programmed it in, did a test. Actually, before I forget, I did some jetting tests. So then, I chucked some bigger jets in, and as you can see, power is roughly about the same. So, I'm going to keep that as my base test, the brown one. I just wanted a bit of extra fuel because I was going to increase the timing quite a bit. So. I just wanted to play it reasonably safe because I haven't got a spare barrel. Right, so I then programmed in that 10 degrees. I didn't do many runs at 10 degrees flat because look at it, it's horrible. It did not want to split running coughing. Uh, if you look at the temperature as well, EGT was through the roof. So, yep, yeah, that wasn't very good. I then did one at 13 degrees, did a little bit better. No. I think I shot off a bit early on the 10 degrees, but on the 13 I let it go. I'm getting some quite good over rev, and we'll look at that and talk about that later. So, I then put in 16 degrees, and I got pretty much what, what I wanted. In fact, you could argue at peak I may want a little bit less time than what I had. But I am losing it up the slope, as you can see, so it's not quite as good. I'm going to deselect. 10 and 13 because it'll get a little bit busy so I then just kept doing it so each time so I did 13 I just went up to 13 there there hit the program because obviously you'd be connected which I'm not at the minute do the run then I went 16 just do that, and it's simple as that, just a flat line curve. So there's no complications. 
and I'm just trying to use that flat line, figure out where the power is best, join all the powers together with the best ignition time and hopefully now it'll be good. So what do we have there? 16 and we're around 18 and you'll notice it'll come up. Yep, yeah, I've got a little bit more up the curve again. Not necessarily any more peak. Then I went for 20. So 20 gave me pretty much what I had before. In fact, a little bit more. So 20 degrees flat worked quite well. I then went 22. Give me some quite good peak power. So I actually picked up quite a bit on the upper curve. And finally, with my fingers crossed, I went for 24. Which is picking up here at the bottom. So I might want to advance the map at the bottom a little bit more. But actually at the top it's kind of hurting peak power. So once I did all that I'll leave that 22 up I think. That's the green. That was 16 degrees flat, I'll get rid of that. The brown is still that's basically our base run. So actually with 24 degree flat it's making a little bit more. Which is pretty cool. So I then went in and I tried to figure it out. I wrote down, I might do a zoom in of this, of, and I kind of wrote down which was better and where, and I made up a map. So I just advanced the, the BDK curve. The BDK curve I had, I shifted it 2000 RPM to the right for when I put the other pipe on. Um, that meant it was sort of in sync for roughly where the pipe's working and the porting. Yeah, so that was the BDK curve I had, and then I modified it, and I modified it here, so if you have a look on there, I've put in the timing curves here, it's probably easy to see it, but I've got the standard one, I moved it 2000 RPM, so there's the, if you go 2K up, and then test curve one, I just added a bit more timing, particularly uh, where I thought it would be better, and tried to build up a curve, so you can see that's the BDK. That's my move to the right BDK and I put a load more timing in because it looked like it was going to like it. However, test curve one actually proved to be my best. I did test curve one and you can see it's just a little bit better everywhere and it still gave me that peak at 17.7 .7. and maybe not quite as good at over rev as initially but better. And then I tried a little bit more, I tried to modify it again, but it went worse, so that was test curve 2. Right, so there we go. So you see peak torques around about 11, and at 11k on that curve, I've got 20 degrees, so it is potentially a little bit too high, I may have to back that off, in fact I will have to back that off, because you should be looking for about 15 degrees. However, I have heard older engines do tend to, because they're not quite as efficient, you can get away with a little bit more advance. Started off 17 point, so we started off 17.1, and we put in test curve 2, and that is what we've got. Not a massive increase, uh, not as big as I thought before, however, it is a bit of a move forward. Things I want to try next, a lot of guys have said um, single piston ring, yeah, I'm trying to get a piston. It's impossible for the 12mm piston pin. Uh, I may just remove one of the rings, but then you've got the problem with the communication between the ports. Uh, what else has been suggested? Yeah, a lot of people mentioned I've dropped my corrected uh, compression ratio. So the compression ratio is measured from when the exhaust port closes. Um, some would say the true or proper compression ratio rather than geometric. Uh, yes, noted. I've ordered some heads. I'm going to remachine them and then try and bring it back to the 7.4 to 1. Had before, what else you guys have mentioned? Uh, polishing stuff as well, mirror finish. I have heard of that before. Uh, it, it's it's not really for flow, but it's to prevent heat getting into the metal, so it radiates. IR can't get in. I think it's reflected off, as I remember from a long time ago. So if you mirror finish your combustion chamber and piston and crown, rather than the heat going into the engine, uh, into the piston and head, it actually just gets dumped into the exhaust, which is brilliant because that's feeding it more energy, which means it can provide better wave action and hence more power. Another thing, yeah, 
yeah, so there's a few things, lots of things. Keep um, keep leaving the comments. I'm trying to get some more. I've had quite a lot more in the last video. I think I'm keeping up with them the best I can, but it, it does actually take a while. And there's a few guys been messaging and emailing me, so uh, I do my best to get back to you. But um, it is quite busy, so if I do miss you, it's nothing personal. It's just I probably genuinely missed you. Um, anyway, that's a lot of waffling. Um, hope you can see. The curve I had, the BDK curve, was pretty bloody good actually. There's not really much I've been able to do to it. In reality, I'll probably go back to it because I think I may cause a bit of detonation in this. So, as always, if you're enjoying it, please like, subscribe, share, comment. I uh, really need that because it's not just me that's going to do that. It's going to be all of us. Uh, lots of other people's suggestions, lots of other people's thoughts working together as a, as a community. Um, hopefully... I can bring all our ideas into fruition and we can achieve 100 mile an hour. So uh, thanks again.